Welcome to Chronic Love, a supportive space for people with chronic illness. I'm Robin, a psychologist in New York City, navigating the fallout of a breast cancer diagnosis some years in. And I'm on a personal journey to join together with others who have similarly found themselves facing life challenges in the wake of chronic illness. Together, with the generous humans you're about to meet, we welcome you into our discussions. My first diagnosis was actually something a bit more complicated that gave me a prognosis of six months to live. It was very scary having been told that it was super rare, that it was super large. Um, it was basically, you know, a large mass just in my chest, mediastinal area, and that it was potentially untreatable or not known to be treatable because it was so rare. What got me to the hospital was a lot of other really alarming symptoms. There was the night sweats, there was the coughing, it was the trouble breathing while sleeping. And that was, that was very, very scary. At the time, I was living with my mom, specifically in Santa Monica. And it was right after I had just graduated college about a year ago. I was kind of getting on my feet. I had a retail job and I couldn't afford health insurance. And so a lot of it was I was kind of, I mean, I think I was on my mom's, but it was also so confusing. It was like really scary to like even do that act, to, to think to walk to the hospital, uh, to walk to the emergency room. But it was, you know, the night before it was, I, I, I could not breathe, I could not like breathe while laying down on my back flat. So it was, yeah, it was really, it was, it was really, really painful. And then, so going there and like thinking like, okay, this might be, so, uh, you know, I thought it was like advanced strep or something and getting like sort of like a very run of the mill sort of a procedural like x-ray and then seeing the reaction of seeing like, you know, like just nurses being like, oh my gosh, what is that? You know, like this humongous mass, you know, that they had not really, that they did not expect to encounter. <laughs> Um, you know, and staying overnight, doing, you know, going like very quickly through like, you know, biopsies and all that sort of stuff. A few, a few blocks down the street from my home. Um, and then getting the result that it was this cancer that I'd never heard of. Uh, you know, it was a very difficult summer. It was very difficult. It was probably one of the worst Fourth of July's I've ever had. <laughs> I will say that. There was one breakthrough where they were just like, I just was having such trouble. I was sort of in and out of the hospital. I couldn't sleep in my bed. And my mom had to put me like in an armchair to like kind of like be up. Um, and I sort of struggled to, you know, just kind of even do that. And so they, they did like a very quick procedure to like kind of like drain some fluid out, out of some of my organs. And like that actually was probably like a procedure that seemed to save my life in some ways. There was still like a cough and there's still other parts, but it was a lot more manageable then. I was able to kind of again, walk and breathe. That led to chemotherapy, which of course was a difficult, difficult routine and trial. I think everybody knows going in that you really are just feeding yourself poison. You know, knowing that was, and like having to kind of make that decision quickly, there were the tools that we, we had are and have, it can just be a very stressful and, and impactful decision that you're making right then and there. Anyways, you know, they gave me a chemotherapy treatment plan that was not expected to really work. They were kind of crossing their fingers like, you know, sure, that'd be great if it does. But like, basically, we're sort of using you as like, you know, another test subject because, you know, why, you know, we don't know of anything that can treat this. This maybe might touch it a little bit. And if it's a, you, you express interest to treat it instead of, you know, more palliative care. So we're going to do it. And, and so in some ways, you know, that's why it's a complicated decision. Cause it's like, you know, in some ways I did regret like some of the externalities or some of the consequences of, you know, sort of things I was foreclosing on my life 
later down the line. But at the same time, it was, you know, that treatment was more effective than it should have been to really open the door to see that it was not actually this very rare cancer, that it was actually a very common cancer, a very treatable cancer, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So that was, it was a bit of a miracle. Um, it was a bit of a miracle. If you're watching this and resonating with any of this, we just want you to know that you are not in this alone. Until next time, sending love. Until next time, sending love. If any of this has been helpful for you, we welcome you to go ahead and to click the like and subscribe buttons. If you'd like to join us for a candid discussion about your experience with chronic illness, or if you'd like to connect to Simply Say Hello, we welcome you to reach out through any of the social media platforms or through our website, and all of our information is listed below.